the organization aspect of the sound system would have always started off from obviously the guy with the money who had the, to could buy the equipment. In the old days, you, you probably had the sound owner who would usually sit on the corner and, and you know, make sure that this, you know, was working properly and the crowd was buying the drinks. Um, because the real, the tra traditional sort of, I guess, the, the concept of the sound system all started off in the old days by um, the, the rum shops that you had. Uh, or like my, my father owned a rum shop. And the, the biggest glory other than selling the rum was to have a jukebox, which would encourage people to come to the rum shop, buy the drinks, and obviously sink more drinks because they're listening to the music that they enjoyed. So that's how you can conjure up an idea of what the whole um, concept of the sound system was about. As we moved to, to obviously to Britain, I guess the same thing in Jamaica, the sound system would have consisted of the owner, somebody with, a te with technical skills, um, be able to string up the amplifiers and make sure everything was working correctly, the selector, which was probably as important as the sound owner. So the selector is the guy that, who would actually select the records, yes? You had the controller. Now, his job was slightly different than the selector. And in the old days, the sound systems used to play with their back towards you, hence my logo. <laughs> but they would play with their back towards you. So you had the selector who would then select the records, the operator or controller is the one who would play it because he would control the preamp. So maybe his job was like an engineer. The selector's job could have been like the producer. The manager's job would have been like the record company owner. You had your MCs and singers featuring whoever, yes? So that was the hierarchy of the sound system. You had to have your henchmen which were the guys who would look after your sound system. Be, yeah, because the sound system was, is a way of life for us. So it's really important, and that's why I think the industry, um, you know, we mimic the industry so much because you had to have your henchmen. Some people may look in a modern sense, maybe they could be the lawyers <laughs> or the managers, but you had, um, you had to have your guys protecting your sound, and then you would have, um, you know, the guy who would control the, um, the door. And um, you had to have your box boys or box people. I never really met any box girls. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of testosterone in the old sound <laughs> systems. There weren't very many females involved on that level, although a lot of sound systems did pick up the cute thing about directing their energies at the women, because if there was lots of women at the dance, lots of men would come and buy out the bar. So, you know, it all makes sense. But the most important thing about Sound System is that um, it empowered us in our community, the West Indians. That was our way of keeping our economics. And that's a very important factor. The Sound System fed us. It fed the people in the community, whether you were a carpenter, or, or, or you were selling um, as a vendor because the vendors made money when the dance was full. And the vendors will sell everything from sky juice to chewing gum to mangoes to sugar cane or whatever. And these things still go on traditionally today.